Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed our last episode, then you can watch it by clicking the card above. We encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. Lifespan News is part of the Life Extend Show, or X10 for short, and both are moving to X10's YouTube channel soon. We encourage you to subscribe to the X10 YouTube channel by clicking the card above. You can also find a link in the description below. Once you're subscribed, be sure to click the notification bell and select all notifications to ensure you don't miss any videos. For our first story, Washington State University researchers identified a factor that controls the formation of hair follicles in baby mice and also is involved with skin repair. The factor, called Lymphoid Enhancer Binding Factor 1, or LEF1, is active during the first week of life in mice, but is switched off in adult tissue. The researchers set out to determine what happens when LEF1 is activated in adult mice. The result was that their skin was able to heal wounds without scarring, and the newly formed skin also had fur. The results can't be translated to humans just yet but they do hold potential for human application and might even allow us to prevent skin aging to some extent. The authors of this discovery created an open access website where their data sets are publicly available. For our next story, Unity Biotechnology has recently announced a new phase one clinical trial for their senolytic drug. Senolytics are drugs meant to eliminate senescent cells, which are cells that no longer divide and whose accumulation over the years is suspected to be a driving factor of age-related diseases. The new drug, called UBX1325, aims at clearing senescent cells that may be involved in the progression of diabetic macular edema, an eye disease that can develop in patients suffering from type 2 diabetes and can lead to blindness. UBX1325's trial will evaluate primarily the safety of the drug, which will be administered to a small cohort of patients. Here at Lifespan News, we recently reported on a previous senolytic drug by Unity, which failed to deliver during a phase two trial. This drug was meant to treat knee osteoarthritis, but failed to show statistically significant effects. We obviously hope Unity will succeed this time, and we'll have a link in the description below if you wanna learn more. Moving on, a review paper proposes a new way to address the shortcomings of hematopoietic stem cell transplants, or HSCT for short. HSCT is used to alleviate the damage caused to the immune system by chemotherapy or radiotherapy administered to cancer patients. Hematopoietic stem cells, or HSCs, are the common progenitor cells of immune cells and HSCT aims to restore cancer patients' immune defenses. However, a key type of immune cells, namely T cells, doesn't readily recover, and in older patients, T cells may fail to do so altogether. Typically, doctors try to compensate for this by adding mature T cells from the donor to the transplant, but as T cells are very aggressive, this may lead to an autoimmune attack called graft-versus-host disease, or GVHD for short. So to work around this, immunosuppressants are often administered to graft patients, but in most cases, they die a few years later, either of cancer relapse or GVHD. The aforementioned review paper suggests that it might be possible to circumvent this whole problem by growing T progenitor cells from donor HSCs and then transplanting them into patients. Generally, transplanted HSCs fail to mature into T progenitor cells on their own, so this procedure may make up for that. Additionally, T progenitor cells lack T cell receptors, without which they can't induce GVHD. When the T cells are transplanted, the host body trains them to recognize the host as self, thus avoiding the insurgence of autoimmune complications. The procedure has been successfully tested in mice, but unfortunately, it can't fully alleviate age-related immune decline, as it proved less effective in older animals than young ones. This is likely because of the age-related decline in functionality of the thymus, a key organ responsible for immune system priming. For our next story, a study funded by the SENS Research Foundation reported the creation of anti-glucosapine antibodies. Glucosapine is an advanced glycation end product, or AGE for short. AGEs are sticky molecules that cross-link bodily tissues, such as arteries, and are suspected to contribute to their stiffening with aging. Glucosapine is the most abundant age observed in the body. A possible solution to the damage caused by age is to develop age breakers, that is, molecules that can break the crosslinks between tissues. 
This approach was first proposed by SINS Research Foundation's Dr. Aubrey de Grey years back, but was difficult to pursue until recently because glucosapain for experiments wasn't readily available. In 2015, a way to synthesize glucosapain was developed, and now the authors of this new study have created an antibody that binds specifically to glucosapain. For the first time ever, the antibody allowed the scientists to determine that glucosapain accumulates in a number of regions of the eye impacted by age-related macular degeneration, thus implicating glucosapain in the disease. The researchers think that this antibody will prove very useful to further investigate the role of glucosapain in human diseases. For our final story, Taisho Pharmaceutical, a well-known leader in the pharmaceutical industry, has teamed up with Insilico Medicine to create new senolytic drugs. Insilico Medicine is a company focused on AI-driven drug discovery. They have developed different AI platforms for target discovery and molecular generation. Insilico will use its AI tools to identify novel targets for senolytic drugs, which will be then validated by Taisho through in vitro and in vivo assays. It really is great to see an established big pharma company stepping up to the challenge of attacking the root causes of aging, and we really hope to see more collaborations like this in the future. That's all the news for this video. Before you go, there's a few free, quick, and simple things that you can do to help us solve the human aging problem. If you haven't already, please like this video, share this video on social media, let us know what you think in the comments below, and also if you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribed, click that notification bell and select all notifications to ensure you don't miss any videos. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video, at least as healthy as you are now.